Jason Fozzi, Technical Service Director at New Farm, and today I wanted to visit with you about some weeds that I get a lot of questions about controlling, and those are sedges and kalinga. Now when you first take a look at these weeds, you may actually think that you have some grasses, but when you take a closer look, you'll notice that they have this very characteristic triangular stem out there. Uh, but I will fully admit that, you know, a lot of times it is difficult at first glance is this a sedge or is this a grass? And it probably wouldn't be all that surprising to say that picture up in the right hand corner there, what we're looking at is about 80% of that is yellow nut sedge. It's not a grass. So it's early in the season. They're just emerging. And like I said, they look somewhat like grasses, but certainly later in the year, you'll find in the warmer months, our, our turf may actually slow down and, and growth a little bit. Whereas our, our yellow or purple nut sedge a lot of times will really outgrow the grass and, and be a little bit taller and make it a little easier to identify. Now there are hundreds of different species of uh, sedges out there that you can encounter in, in landscapes or in turf settings. So one of the things to keep in mind is that when you're looking at some of the sedges, this could be a rather unique sedge, but we're certainly going to touch on some of the more common uh, species of sedge today. But like I mentioned, they all have a very characteristic triangular stem. The other thing when you cut these in half, you also find that all of them really have these kind of large pithy cells on the outside and they have this rather slick or, or smooth surface um, that you'll find on the stem. So what does that really mean? It's a lot of times it's hard to get our herbicides into these plants. And once they get into the plants, to get them to translocate. So it is really important with any of the herbicides that we're talking about, uh, trying to use a herbicide to even manage our sedges, is that we add a surfactant to that. And a lot of times I'll just say, um, or suggest even using a non-ionic surfactant along with any of these herbicides, just to help to get some uptake through that sort of slick surface and into the plant to where these herbicides can then start to have an effect on the plant. But you know, overall sedges, you know, they are difficult to control because many of them are perennials. So we're not only dealing with the above ground uh, plant material, but certainly below the ground, which in a lot of cases is, is more important of trying to control, trying to get that herbicide down into those rhizomes or tubers uh, to provide long-term control of these plants. So you need to keep that in mind. And, and certainly with sedges, you know, these are warm season weeds. So what does that really mean is that these are weeds that tend to do better under warm conditions. They really can thrive where it's warm and in some cases where it's wet or in situations where say in turf, uh, where the turf starts to slow down the growth. A lot of these uh, sedges can then start to take over in these areas or in landscape beds where it's wide open and you have some sedges that just start to initiate some growth in there with no competition, they can really thrive in, in those settings. But there also um, are some annual sedges out there. We'll talk about a few of these in this presentation. And again, these are warm season weeds that in this case come back from seed every year. Now, the two most common uh, sedges that you're gonna find really across the country are purple nut sedge and yellow nut sedge. And you know, when they're flowering, you can see by these pictures, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between the two. You know, the yellow nut sedge, as the name indicates, is much more of a yellow flower uh, relative to purple nut sedge. And why is this important? It's primarily because certain herbicides will do a very good job on yellow nut sedge, but not always do a very good job of controlling purple nut sedge. We'll find that overall, uh, compared when you compare these two, that purple nut sedge is more difficult to control than yellow nut sedge. So identification is important between yellow and purple nut sedge. Again, certain herbicides work better on yellow than they do on purple nut sedge. And, and the way to tell this, especially if it's early in the season before they flowered, is to dig one of these up and take a look at the tubers. If that tuber, when you take and wash it off and clean it up, it's really slick and smooth and has no hairs or no rhizomes coming from that tuber, like on the very bottom right hand picture, that's yellow nut sedge. However, when you dig these up and there's a lot of hairs off of those tubers that they're all connected in kind of a chain, well, then you know that you're dealing with purple nut sedge. And again, purple nut sedge is, is a little more difficult to control than yellow nut sedge for, for many of these herbicides. Uh, the other most common sedges that you're going to encounter, I think, in ours is, is this one called Kalinga species. I'll say there's several, again, out there. 
Uh, but again, this very characteristic triangular stem. Uh, in this case, you can see the flower or seed head is a little bit different, it's a little smaller in stature, kind of round. Um, and these are much more of a mat growing weed. Here's kind of a picture uh, of a, a false green Kalinga uh, sitting sort of in uh, a set of keys in a patch of this false green Kalinga. And you can see sort of the size here, differential, much more smaller in stature as far as this weed goes, but it's much more mat, mat-like. It's very, very dense, uh, but this is a warm season uh, perennial. In this case, it spreads a lot of times by seed. So a little bit different than our yellow and purple nut sedge. Um, again, much more mat-like lower growing. I've seen this even in, in creeping bent grass golf greens to where, you know, tolerates a very low mowing height. So a very adaptable weed in our false green uh, Kalinga. And here's a fragrant Kalinga. Uh, this is a little bit more unusual in that it is a true annual sedge. And this one seed spreads by seed. So if we can get control of this weed early in the season before it's allowed to seed, certainly makes a great way to, to try to manage this particular weed long term. So again, timing becomes important, especially with these Kalingas that, that reproduce mostly by seed. So we're looking at trying to manage our, our sedges and Kalinga. You know, there's a couple of things here to keep in mind. First, the program approach. And, and a lot of times this is difficult, especially if we're in cool season turf, for instance, we don't have a strong pre-emergence program. We mostly rely on post-emergence materials, but you know where we can use a pre-emergence herbicide, either warm season turf or in landscape beds, you know, it's great to try to get one of these group 15 herbicides, if it's a pennant magnum, a tower, maybe if you were going to use a, a granule like a freehand, to try to get one of these materials out to at least get you some baseline control of some of these sedges. Then using the right post-emergent product a little bit later in the season if there's some escapes, you know, so a pre-post is more of a program approach to going after some of these sedges, especially if you've continually tried to, to fight these sedges and had, haven't had much success. Uh, again, trying to have a pre-post program can really help out. And, and certainly it's really important, you know, to, to get your timing correct. I've talked about this with a couple of these weeds, but you know, if they're annual sedges or perennial, you know, to make those applications before they really have the ability to produce either tubers or rhizomes or, or seed for the next year for these things to, to persist into the next year. So again, taking advantage of the products that we have applied at the right time is really critical when it comes to, to managing our, our sedges overall. Now, one of the new tools that we've introduced to really help people in the marketplace in trying to control our, our Kalingas and, and sedges is Solero herbicide. Solero is an all new herbicide and really what makes it the most unique material on the market is that it is the best as far as being translocated in our sedges. So you can make an application just to the foliage. I will say it's rather slow acting but what makes it so effective long term is that it does find its way down to the roots and into the tubers to where it can actually have good long term control. And that's just kind of what I'm showing in this picture here with the red dots is that herbicide can be applied to the foliage and find its way all the way down into the roots versus some other materials. Here we're looking at, at something like sulfentrazone where it's more active, more uh, at the soil level. Uh, more so than actually being applied in the foliage and moving down. It's just more of a contact type with limited translocation. So wherever it comes in contact, it, it works well there. But again, it doesn't always move real effectively down into the tubers to get good long-term control. That's where a product like Solero is much more effective when you're trying to, to make applications to larger plants uh, where you can take advantage of that translocation down to the roots and get complete control of these plants. Now with yellow nut sedge control and turf, uh, here we're looking at percent control. So the larger the bar, the better the control. And what we're comparing here is just an application of the highest labeled rate of dismissed 12 fluid ounces per acre. Again, a very high rate. And these applications were made June 3rd, June 25th, July 15th, August 5th. So you can see the longer the year went on than those gray bars, they tended to drop over time. Versus the green bars here are Solero at eight ounces per acre. So this is our lowest application rate. And that was applied with this non-ionic surfactant. And you can see how those continue to increase over time to where complete control was at August 5th from a single application. So very different herbicides. One works best applied early. One 
continues to just improve the larger and larger and larger the plants get. So it's important to know the difference between some of the herbicides that are out there and, and available. But, you know, to me, Solero is a great option, especially anytime, you know, in my opinion, from the 4th of July on, just a wonderful product to get really good control of, of yellow nut sedge and, and our other sedges as well. Here's just a picture from uh, one of the field days they had at Purdue University. And, and these two graduate students that we're talking about this trial are standing in this what looks like turf. That this is 100% yellow nut sedge. So in those plots right behind them where it's completely bare, that's not removal of turf, that's removal of yellow nut sedge. When we take a look at some of the plots here, in the far left we're looking at the untreated, then a highest labeled rate of pro sedge. You can see where that's thinned it out. There's a few broad leaves in there. But overall, on the right, the Solero application has completely removed the yellow nut sedge in this trial area. So again, a stand of really 100% yellow nut sedge and the Solero by itself with a single application, which was made in this case in June, uh, displayed really 100% control on, on July 11th. So really good control with Solero on our, our yellow. Here's a trial looking at false green Kalinga control in, in Kentucky bluegrass at Rutgers. And you can see really how it stands out. There's two, two bars here that are very, very high. And this is at eight and 14 weeks after a single application, which again, this application was made in late June, June 27th. And if you take a look at those two green bars, it's the low rate, the eight ounce per acre rate of Solero and the 14 ounce per acre rate of Solero. So the two rates from low to high, really in this case, didn't make any difference, but you can see the difference in the treatments here where Pro Sedge at the highest label rate dismiss at eight fluid ounces and Vexus, which is a new granular material, which shows a good activity on a lot of sedges. But in this particular case, in this trial, uh, none of those other three herbicides worked very well for our false green Kalinga control. I will say, uh, again, non-ionic surfactant is a is very important, especially with a herbicide like Solera, where you're trying to get this material into the plant, again, get it translocated to where it can have strong activity. These are two pictures from a trial that was conducted at Ohio State. And you can see on the left, Solero at 14 ounces. So all that area in front of the sign has been treated, complete control of, of yellow nut sedge versus on the right side, where it was Solero with no surfactant, just terrible control. There's yellow nut sedge all over. So same herbicide, same day, only thing different is with and without surfactant. You can see it worked great with surfactant, terrible without. So again, keep that in mind, the importance of, of adding a surfactant when you're trying to control sedges. So some overall takes with Solero, you know, overall it does have very good to excellent control of sedges. It has this very wide application window. Uh, again, good results in, in June, all the way really throughout the year. And um, for many applications, even the lowest application rate uh, with surfactant can be very effective. Uh, this is just a quarter ounce per gallon of, of material uh, when you're using Solero. So keep that in mind, especially if you're making small spot spray applications, quarter ounce per gallon of water. Um, it also does control some important broadleaf weeds. You'll find that, uh, you know, not only it has activity on sedges, but again, some broadleaf weeds, but really it has no activity on grasses. Uh, we've seen no response to any of our cool season or warm season grasses with Solero. So feel comfortable that you can go over the top of grasses uh, with no injury uh, really being observed from an application of Solero. So hopefully that gave you some ideas or some tips and tricks uh, when trying to control some of these Kalinga and sedge species. So with that, uh, we'll conclude by saying thank you and look forward to visiting uh, with you again soon on one of our webinars.